Now, I'm continuing with what I've been teaching for some time on kingdom citizens. And today I want to deal with a subject of be fruitful. Look at some say, be fruitful. Be fruitful. Be fruitful. You cannot, you cannot be in a kingdom when you are not fruitful. Genesis chapter 1 verse number 28. Genesis 1 28. 1 28. Then God blessed them and God said, be fruitful. The first thing God blessed man with is fruitfulness. Be fruitful to multiply then feel what it means by be fruitful and multiply is with a semicolon being there. It means that fill the earth, subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, every living thing that moves on the earth. Now this is a serious thing. Can we read this all together in unison? Go. 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 I didn't hear you. Let's go. Go. B and so that what does it mean? Fill the earth, subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the bears of the air, and over every one living thing that moves on the earth. In other words, God wanted man to be fruitful and multiply so that we can control three atmospheres. In order to control three atmospheres, that is the airspace. Are you with me? The earth and the waters or the sea. Now, of course, even though Adam was made with Eve, the two alone couldn't control all this thing. They couldn't control, let me, let me, I know some of you are wondering. They couldn't control the atmosphere, the air. They couldn't control the sea. They couldn't control the earth by themselves. They could only enjoy their little garden of Eden. But if they decided to multiply, then God will begin to expand their territory. Now, how many of you want to go to heaven when you die? Very nice of you. Now, where does God stay? Where does God stay? Let me come down and watch your face. Maybe if I see your face, you you where does where is God staying? Where is God? I can't hear you. God is in God is in us. So, so why do you want to go to heaven? Where does God stay? God stays where? In you. Okay. So why do you want to go to heaven? I thought you are going to heaven to enjoy. So if God is already in you, where is the residence of God? I can't hear you. Leave the rest there. Where is God's residence? You know, when we're growing up, we we're told that God is in heaven. So we are going to go to God in heaven. Is it true? Then if God is in heaven, then Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 must be very confusing. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The heaven and the earth. So when he was about to create the heaven, where was he staying? This is somebody who created the heaven and the earth in the beginning. So before heaven and earth, where was he staying? Should I show you his address? Are you sure? You are too much in the hurry. So we have been told that, oh, we are going to heaven. Of course, Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God and believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. So we think that there are some buildings be, trizaco houses be. Somewhere in heaven that we are going to go to. So if he created a heaven and the earth, where was he staying? 
Oh, amen. In Ephesians chapter 1, let's look at 1, 2, 3. Ephesians chapter 1. You see, I'm, I'm saying this because I started with God created, um, with God said have dominion over the air, the best of the air, right? That is the heavenlies. And then have dominion over the earth and then over the sea. And I'm trying to tell you that all these three dimensions, one man could not have done it. It is too wide an estimate. Are we in Ephesians chapter 1? Okay, let's do it. Let me gather myself. Ephesians 1. Okay. Paul, okay, let's read from um, 2. Grace be to God and peace from God our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's read verse 3 together. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all in in Every, you see, when we read it, we say in heavy places, but read it in heavy places in Christ. So, where does God stay in Christ? And so, when the Bible said, if anybody is in Christ, it's simply saying, if anybody is in God. And when the Bible says Christ in you, the hope of glory is saying that God is inside you. So God's abode is in Christ. So Jesus came on earth and they called his name Jesus Christ because he is God. Am I, am I making myself clear? So if you want to die and go to heaven, is there heaven? Yes, there is heaven. My heaven is not a place that God is sitting. God is in a class of his own. And in the class of his own, he created man so that we too we can have a class of our own. But unfortunately, if you have been listening to my kingdom citizenship, we handed over the keys to Satan. And Jesus said something, and he said that no man can enter a strong man's house Unless he first what binds the strong man and takes the goods in which he trusted. I think it looked 14. So you can't bind the strong man. So when Jesus wanted to take the things that Satan has taken from Adam, what did he do? He had to go to the strong man's house. Are you, are you with me? Are, are you here and going home? And bind him. Do you know why we have gifts of the spirit operating? It's a sign that Satan has been bound. Because you can never, can I have that scripture? You can never take the goose that is in the strong man's house until you bind the strong man. Please, are you with me? Is it on the screen? Okay, let's read this one. Go. How can one enter a strong man's house and plunder his goose unless he first binds the what? And then he will plunder his house. So, what Jesus did was that before his Bible said he gave gifts unto men, before he can give gifts to us, he had to take it from Satan. And because for, for him to take it from Satan, it means that he had to bind Satan in his own backyard. So now you look at the fruit of we manifesting our godly character, binding of devils, binding of principalities, and you will know straight away that the fruit of that is the Take it into captivity of Satan. If if your phone is yours and it's in the hands of somebody, as long as it's in the hands of the person, if I tell you you have received it, you say I receive it. But that thing you have received is in the spirit. But if the phone comes into your hands, you, and you are using it, you have browsing and checking messages and co, they can now say that I have taken their phone for you. So the sign that Jesus Satan right now has been bound and has no power over me and you is the way we manifest the gift of God. So the gift of God is the fruit of the fact that Satan is no longer having control over us. When a person marries Nobody is in the bedroom to observe what they do in the house. 
But one of the things that is expected after a year or two is children. Why? Because you can never know what people do in their bedroom. But the evidence of what you do in their bedroom is pregnancy. Is it true or is it not true? Or is it true or is it not true? That is the evidence of what you have been doing. That There's a statement we say is that um, character is like pregnancy. You can't hide it. You can even be pregnant and put belt on it very soon. <laughs> the belt will tear. And in that same way, I can never know if you are a Christian whether the Holy Ghost you have is a good Holy Ghost until I look at your fruits. You see, everybody can say they are born again. Everybody can say it's a Christian, no problem. Yes, you are a Christian, but what I am not in your heart, but what I can use to judge whether you are a true Christian is the fruit you are bearing. If I take you to school, I pay your fees. What I expect is first to three. That is a good fruit. If you are 17, 18, 19 out of 30, you have a funny sir. But if after going to University of Ghana, Legon, for how many years you come with no certificate, the proof is of your ability, your, the proof of your certificate is a sign that you went to school. If you have no certificate after finishing a school, you didn't go to school. I think I'm not preaching here. Now, as to how you lived in school is determined whether you got first class or you just got a certificate. <laughs> just a certificate. You see, as a parent, I am not in the school to observe you when you are in your boyfriend's room or your girlfriend's whether you are not you are clapping or you are doing whatever, I don't know. But the only evidence that can show me that you were in school after the three, four years is your certificate. Now, right now, what is the proof that you, you are a Christian? I'm talking to you about being fruitful. What is the proof that you are a Christian. You've been born again for how many years? Yes, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. We worship you. We praise you. We hallow your name. You bow down. You lift up. It is good. But I want to know what is your fruit. What, it is your fruit that will tell me whether you are a Christian or you are not. Don't tell me you are rich. Because there's money in the bank. Your money being in the bank doesn't make you rich. There are people who have nothing in their pocket, but they are very rich. Because riches is, um, uh, is mental. First, let me say it. If it is not mental, it is not yours. Anything you have that doesn't come first as a mindset, you will lose it. If somebody gives you $100,000 and you don't have a mindset of $100,000, you'll still become poor. That's right. That's right. You'll still become poor. Look, you, you can marry the queen's daughter and you'll still be a poor person. So one day, a prophet told a woman that give me something to eat first. The woman said, this is my last and the prophet said, give it to me first. Because it's all about a mindset. What is last and first? The woman was thinking, this is my last. I eat and I, drink, and I throw it away. This one, when I was coming to church, God showed me something and I cried. He said, Francis, I wish I had taken an example. Like, like, okay, this one we do. I saw an energy drink I, I drink from. I saw a lot of them. About six. When I was driving to church, there's even tears in my and I saw that I was drinking it. And when I finished, I threw the bottle away. And I asked for the next one. And it was like, there's a fridge in my car. So I opened the fridge. It's like a vision. I threw the next one I drink, and I threw the next one away. And he said, this is how people treat me. They just take what is in me, and they throw me away. 
they don't like me. They only like what I can give to them. You see, you are right. So, after I use this oil, the probability is that I'll throw this bottle away. But somebody too, who knows about anointing very well, will know that after you throw this oil away, if there's oil has been in this bottle, and this bottle has been in the hand of a man of God, I can still keep this bottle. Anytime I pour oil into it, it becomes anointed. But so, so many people are just around God because of what they will get. So at the end of the day, if you look at the average Christian, we are going to church, we are singing, we are ushering, but we show a life of who did here? Oh, bread. You are suffering. Poverty is your mother-in-law. And sickness is your personality. And you are asking, and I'm asking myself this question. How come we are not getting results? Jesus says something in Matthew chapter 12, verse 33. He said, I don't make the tree good and its fruit good. Or else make the tree corrupt and its fruit corrupt. For, the, for this is known, for the tree is known by what? Okay, let's read together. Go. Go. Oh, I can't hear you. I oh, can't read so that you will change the position of the TV. Read. tree is known by its fruit. We can argue, this is a pear tree, this is not a pear tree, it's a mango tree. We all argue. By the day it starts bearing fruit, everybody will understand that, look, this tree is a, is a pear tree. Is it true? It's not true. Now, if you have served God, I'll give an example in the Bible, for at least, I'll give you an example now, for at least three years, and you are not seeing your life top well, I wonder which Holy Ghost you have. I'm, I'm, I'm not lying to you. I've boldly put my hands on my chest before and I said that if you come to break six months, if your life doesn't change, you leave. And I tell such people that these are my rules, obey it. And I can give you that about 99% of them, they don't leave, they stay. Because they realize that there is a total transformation. So three years is long enough. And I'll give you a biblical proof very soon. Three years of being born again. If after three years of being born again, you don't understand your life as a Christian, financially, economically, maritally, relationships, your prayer life, your relationship with God, then the, the seed of your born again is corrupted. I like the way you are quiet. Anything that has not been captured in your heart, your heart, your mind, or spirit is not yet your own. You can say, Receive one million dollars, I receive it. Well, you receive nothing because after 10 years, you are so zero percent profit. You will break through, I receive it. You marry this year. I take up. I possess her. You can take it. You can even see to it. But the thing is that if the thing is not yet captured in your heart. Do you know one thing I know about myself? I can't fail. And it is not a your pain because the things you see here doesn't make me. I make the things. This, this, these are two different things. So, if you take my tablet from me, I can still buy one. You know, some people, if you take something from them, their life is over. Is it true? Why are you so quiet? <laughs> Pastor, you don't know. Three days, my rent is due. That is why you are that way. Say, Pastor, you there, you don't pay rent. I've paid rent before. I know how it feels. Pastor, you don't know. 
The truth is this. If you know what you can produce, if you know what you can get out of what you are doing, you do it with all boldness. You see, a lot of believers are doing try your luck with God. What are they doing? Is it true or is it not true? Young question in there, soften in there, no, Becca. Let's see what the pastor will say today. In Colossians chapter 1, let's do a little bit of reading. Colossians chapter 1, verse 9. Because of time, let's do from 9. For this cause, we are reading 9 through 11. Can we do this? Gonna go. For this cause, we also, since the day we heard of it, do not cease to pray for you. And you desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his. And not that way, if the Bible is yours, underline it. Yeah, if even it's a tablet, there's a way to underline it. You must be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. And what? I didn't hear you. Let me give you some time as you understand it. I've seen people fight altar. And let's say an altar is in your family. It is fighting. It's in the name of Jesus. I bind it. It will never be bound by the name of Jesus. Altars can never be bound by Jesus' name. Altars are always broken by an altar. That dear be nature that dear. Iron sharpened iron. So when it comes to altar, God says that I am the God that keeps a covenant to the first, the second, and the third generation. He said, if you are married to a witch, still stay. You can't break the marriage. The fact that your wife is a witch or your husband is a wizard doesn't mean that you must break. You can be broken away, but you are still already committed to it because it's a covenant. And covenant must always be broken with covenant. If something can easily be broken, then God would have easily stood in heaven and said, I have died. I have risen again. Yale, you are free. It's God. Anything he says, it comes to pass. Right? So he can easily declare, I am God. I have come to the earth. I have died. <laughs> I have risen again on the third day. It is a figment of your imagination. You have thought about it. Jesus Christ died before the foundation of the earth. God thought about it. But when it came to the reality, Jesus had to really die. So you can think about it, but you must live it. Oh, I've been thinking. Ah, shut up. I think. Yeah, you have finished thinking. Go and work. Nobody can think and get a woman pregnant. You can think and date a woman. You can use mental thinking to think and think and think to, for somebody to start falling in love with you. It's possible. But when it comes to giving birth, no amount of thinking can give you a child. Is it true or is it not true? And can I also tell you this? No amount of prayer can give you a child. If like pray, fast 40 days, 40 nights, and don't do what everybody must do to get pregnant. At the witches in my family keep binding. There are certain things, no matter the prayer, and that's why some of the unbelievers don't fast and pray, but they get certain results because they understand some things that are spiritual than we who say we are spiritual. I had a politician went to his village and I'll mention because you will know. Every place in there, his constituency, every church, eh, he has bought uh, their church building. He's part of it. Meanwhile, he's an occult. Pastor David knows this man. 
He's an uncle, but he knows very well that there are certain things if you do, you last long. Do you know why? Should I go a little deep? Do you know why Nanado insisted on building a temple? David decided to build, decided. God said, your kingdom will reign forever. Decided. He didn't build it. He decided. For four years of Ivory Coast, he built the biggest cathedral for the Catholic Church in Ivory Coast. When Kwame Nkrumah was being deposed, all the African countries, they were doing cool all over the world. Nobody could have put Fofo Banya until the man died. He was not a Christian. He was also a court. Kofu Banya, his real name is Kofu Banya. He's from Ghana. Since the day the building is there. Because there are certain keys that if you have, whether you are a believer or you are an unbeliever, it will work. So you might never like the president. <laughs> but the day he made a decision, I'm going to build. They said, take it to the bush. He said, I can't give God anything in the bush. It must be in town. He's build, pulling down judicial buildings. You might criticize it. You might have a good cause. But God looks from heaven and says that you want to do what? Build me a house. Your second term is assured. Okay, you say, God, God, God. Listen, what didn't David do? What sin didn't David commit? But God said, you will last long. Let me give you an example. Read your Bible. A man is not a Jew. He's a Gentile. A centurion. A Roman soldier. His citizen or his child or his whatever was sick and dying. They told Jesus, go and heal them. Jesus said, I'm not going. Then they said, this man, you see the temple you've been praying inside? He's the one that built it. Jesus said, let's go. Uh, wasn't this man the same person who said he won't go? And so there comes a level that it doesn't matter who. Someone asked him, man of God, I've not seen you do harvest. Or this thing that you bring people to your church, they sit down and then you raise money and give them money. I said, because unbelievers always will come to churches like this give donations and we will sit down and they'll give the donations and they'll get into the covenant and they'll get a blessing and the real people who need a blessing they will not get it and God doesn't look at it as for God what he wants to do is what he wants I was going to put the scripture on the screen the centurion man is it there for he loves a nation and he has built us a synagogue the next verse Jesus said, oh, Lord, let's go. Somebody who didn't want to go. Jesus went with them. Okay, maybe you say he, he just wanted to go. Let's go up to verse 3. And th- when they came, Jesus, they besought him instantly saying that he was not go to the verse 3. And when he heard Jesus, he said unto him that others of the Jews received that he will come and heal his servant. Let's go. And when they came to Jesus, they besought him instantly, saying that he was worthy for whom he should do this. For he loves a nation and he has built us a synagogue. Jesus was dead. It was a visa. Can we go on? Can we go on? So verse 10, that, okay, so verse 9 said, we must be filled with the knowledge of, you say, knowledge of him. Wisdom of him. And spiritual understanding of him. Now let me tell you this, it's a simple thing. Many people don't like to have the wisdom of God. We have book wisdom. We will go and sit down. Where, Where is this? How many years did you sit down to learn how to do hair? 
I have a daughter. She was not coming to church. Every Sunday she was there learning how to do hair. She went religiously. Religiously. Tell that same person, come to church every day. Most will be to now white, now white, now white, now white, now white. Some people can sit down for their head to a plate at six hours and they know very well that if they don't go by 5 a.m., they will not get to finish the day. So what they will do is that they will leave the house at 2 a.m. And even then, when they get there, they start their own at 8. And they will sit down till it is 5. And then they will do only half. Then they will go and come back the following day for continuing. Tell this same person. Master, it is not your beauty that will give you a good home. Oh, pastor, you see, Pastor, but you see, but I spent two hours on Sunday. When is I spent two hours? So if you put it all together, you see, I'm not talking about the hours spent. I'm talking about the attitude you put in when it came to your hair. I'm talking about the attitude you put in when it came to the things that you have to get. When you want to sew your dress, you can go and visit the tailor, measure, you remove it, measure, remove it, measure, remove it, measure, remove it until you get it the way you want it. Is it true? It's not true. That's it. Pass a message where we will preach kingdom and kingdom citizen. Will you change the topic and bring another one? Mm. Mm. I know who I'm preaching to. <laughs> People can watch TV and all they are looking for is hairstyle and dresses. Somebody can stop TV. Know what you saw. A person spectacles with chapita spectacle, not on them or baby out of space. But a better also, but one more to be no action. But to space is it true? Is not true? Is it true? Is not true? So, if the thing about God, eh, this thing about God is not in your brain, how many of you were here on Friday? I got here, Holy Ghost said, change your message. I said, I have some my notes to them. He said, change it. Right there, I started typing. Making the notes for the service. And I spoke for two and a half hours. I didn't finish. Why? Because the thing is inside you. If I'm walking here right now, the Holy Ghost said, recite the national anthem of Nigeria. Say, God, please say I only know that of Ghana. And you say you want to be an ambassador. You will pray that God make me an ambassador. God gives you an opportunity. Recite um, the national anthem of Botswana. <laughs> so if you're walking in life and all of a sudden God comes to you, do this. Because you lack the knowledge, somebody will do it and get the benefit, which is the fruit. And you will still be lacking and say that God has disappointed you because your knowledge is only limited to what is of interest to you. Verse 10, quickly, because I have so much to do, that he might walk worthy of the Lord on all pleasing. Somebody say pleasing. Being what? Fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of being what? Being what? Being what? Being what? In some work. In, uh, in some work. Let me tell you to put it at the back of your head. From today, there's nothing you will do that must not give you good food. If if it if it will not give me good food, I'm not doing it. If this thing will not benefit me, I'm not getting it done. One of my personal rule: never go to work where there are no spoils. Anything I do, I should ask myself, what will I get out of this? If I'm spending time teaching you, Master, it's not that I want to teach you. I've seen that some breakthrough is coming. At least your task will solve my problem. So everything you must have, you must have a reason. You see, when there is a major cause, why are you coming to church? They say we should come. They are bastards. Uh, they say, if I don't come because I'm leading a song, I must come. Hey, because of, that is why you are getting nothing. Am I preaching here? Oh, is it true or is it not true? Now let's read again. That he might walk, What? Oh, help me go. That you might walk 
Uh -huh. Oh, Master, in Ayat Ebra 4. Go. That you might walk of the Lord unto all pleasing, being what? In every and increasing in the knowledge of God. Let me tell you this. Anytime God gives you something, the next thing to do is increase in knowledge on what he has given you. So, are you watching me? They give you keyboard. You can play keyboard. But you must increase in knowledge on the keyboard. They give you PC. You must increase in knowledge on what you are doing. The next time we see you are showing us skills. They give you a song. Come and sing. As it was in the beginning. You must increase. You must add value. They say, where did you come from? If God gives you two cities, and after a year it comes and it's still two cities, you are failed. To God, God, people went to hell. Read your Bible, Matthew 25. People were cast in hell because they still gave God the same thing he gave them. God wants increase. And a sign that you are still the same, since you became born again, it means that you are not obeying God. Finito. If you are obeying God, you must have an automatic increase. Am I teaching you? Okay, if you won't clap, I clap for myself. Verse 11 Strengthen with all might according to the glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering and what? Joyfulness. Now, these are some of the fruits you have. But let's move on because I'll deal with this thing. Now, what is the fruit of repentance? Say, fruit of repentance. Many, how many of you have repented? Jesus came preaching in Matthew. He said, give me Matthew 3, 8. He said, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand, right? I, I'm not if you have repented. Gee, I like what was said because if you have repented, there is a sign. Actually, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says that if anybody is in Christ, he said, it's a new, it's a new. Now, the new creation is not an outward creation. It's a mental creation. Now, before we come to this, um, um, give me Second Corinthians 5, verse 17, the, the um, NLT version. He said, a new life has begun. When you become born again, it's a new life, and that new life must be fed. And some of you, since you became born again, you are still feeding that old, still a small man. You buy Kenke two cities, fish, 30 cities. That's why you are still poor. Your stomach is giving you direction. Some of you, fashion, dressing is giving you direction. You are not poor. Every day you want a new dress. Let's read. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become what? The old life is, and the new life has. So it is a new life. Is there what? It is what? It is what? I didn't hear you. It is what? It is what? So you are not bearing fruit because you are still bearing the old fruit. What is this new life? It's a life of prosperity. It's a life of peace of mind. It's a life of success. Hello? So in Matthew 3 verse 8, he says that let us Bring forth therefore fruit, met for righteousness, for what? For repentance, sorry. Bring forth therefore fruits, met for repentance. So, if a person has repented, it is not the crying. Okay. Let me use you as an example. I don't like the way you come to church late. Start, oh, daddy, I've heard you. Daddy, it won't happen again. Please forgive me. I said, no, no, no. No, Daddy, please. You watch me. I've changed. You come next week. You come early. Now, after that, I'm not watching you. Following week, late. 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 You are still having that old life. 
And the reason why you're having that old life is that all the, oh, I'm sorry, forgive me now, okay, it was fake. If it was true repentance, you will not be questioned on it again. Is it true it's not true? Or is it true it's not true? Because you want to sleep, you have wet your tongue. <laughs> Which strategy is that one? I need to learn. So let's read. Bring forth what? Therefore fruits met for what? Repentance. And did not to say within yourself, we have Abraham as our father. Or say unto you that God is able to um, able of these stones to raise up children to Abraham. See, people said this, like, listen, you know what God can do? God is my father. FD Allah is my father. But who failed me? I'm a member of Bridge Ministries. No weapon fashion against me shall prosper. I will not die before my time. Yes, you are not dying, but you are growing old and you are still single. <laughs> oh, no, Jesus was telling them. Oh, he said, listen, you keep saying that Abraham is our father. It is. And now God can even turn a stone to praise him. It's also true. But look at your life. Your, your stone has not been turned. God can do everything. You know. God can do these things. God can do this. God will do this. That is true. But the thing you know, what is there? What do you have to do to meet the standard? You make thousand cities. You bring ten cities tight. And the worst is you teach on tight. You've been teaching others to be tight. And you. You are just telling your spirit that you are an idiot. It's, it's simple. It's like you are just telling yourself, I don't want to make it. You are telling someone, this thing, see, this one is good. This thing is good. That one is good. But ask the person, are you living it? <laughs> it's not for us. One day, I, I had this group of people, sons, and anything I needed, oh, Nedo, any latest phone, this my son will buy for me. Latest shoe. I was only wearing designer shoes. Latest phone, every kind of phone that came, I had one. I was one of the first people to get vibration. I mean, you mentioned the phone. Motorola, when it came, neck. I mean, Ericsson. I mean, you named the phone. One day, this my son told me something. I think he was a prophet. He, he calls me Olma. He said, Olma, this leper's grace you've been telling us to do, do you do some? I said, oh, me, I don't really need to do it. So, oh, man, it's helping me. You need to do some because some of us, one day, will make money and will not mind you. As if he was perfect. Now he doesn't mind me. So I started doing it myself. Then I began to see that it. You see, I have written a book on leper's grace. People are using it, they are succeeding. But me, I felt like me, I don't need to apply it because I know. And that is the most, the most painful thing in life is to be an educated idiot. You are educated, but you don't see life too. Do you know that? Let me give you. Do you know one thing that is so funny? Pardon me, but let me tell you. When a woman goes to check up, a man goes to check up, and they do check up and they tell them there's nothing wrong with you, you can give birth, and you are still not giving birth. At least if you go and they tell you that this is the problem, you can be okay to have a problem. But you don't have a problem. So why am I not having children? Am I teaching you or I'm not teaching? You teach people. Mathematics, they pass and go to university. You, when you write your thing. You can teach, teach people. What's the local number? Give people a local number. They will go and cast. They will get you. You will not cast. The day you don't cast, that is the day the thing will come. And the funny thing is that this person say that Abraham is our father. And so what? 
Our God is able. And so what? He said, bring forth fruit. That leads to repentance. Bring forth a character that shows that you have changed. Look, I know people who finish university and they are suffering. And I know who never step in university are making it. As if as soon as you finish Harvard, you are great. So we went to Harvard University and we finished year. You finish what? You will finish year and somebody will employ you. Who has never been to school will employ you? Because there are persons are applying what you don't apply. Ah, I, I, I think I'm teaching here. And let me tell you this. Young ladies, let me tell you this. I want to teach something. I don't want to go there. Don't marry men. I repeat, do don't want to make their fingers dirty. Some men are too neat to be married. It's another topic. I said they are too neat. Their nails are always smooth. Oh my God. Pastor, you see, you see, if you see some people whose nails are not today, please check their nails before. You, you don't just jump and have three piece suit. If you see people riding big cars today, they didn't jump and got big cars. They walked till their shoe became like this. They had automatically bow leg. Today, they don't have bow leg because their shoe, their car tie is the one that becomes bow leg. Ties, car ties can weigh off. And when you are driving, the car becomes like this. How many of you have had their car tie do that before? You go and they tell you that half away, half is gone off. Because the one which is working now, no matter what, there must be a bow legged, either your leg or your thigh. Something must do a work. One day I went to a place, I saw oh, they should buy me fuel. We are buying. Somebody came and said, Pastor, you need to change your tie. I said, My tie? I just bought it recently, so now you have to change it. When I went to know the back tie, all the place is only metal. The whole teeth was gone. All the black was gone. It was only metal that was going. I said, God, I said, Pastor, this way if you don't change. Look, I immediately called Pastor David. I said, whatever it is, let these two ties be changed. If it is you, a carbon, Zakinte, no weapon. At this stage, it was no weapon because you didn't know. Now that you know, <laughs> you know the weapon. You have the answer. If you don't apply the answer, God opening my eyes to see that the tie has become that was word of knowledge. The person he brought to show it to me, I was buying for that person who showed it to me was an angel. To you, you don't know, but the person who came to show me my tie saved my life. And you can say, I paid. I said, Some things in the name of Jesus doesn't go. You keep Jesus in the name of Jesus. I didn't even have money. So I went to a friend. I said, change the tie. When I went, the case became where I said, all the four. <laughs> I said, okay, then give it to me. I'll pay you. But so you will pay. I changed it. Because my life depended on it. Am I preaching here? Have you seen people say things like, Abraham is my father before. You, must say, you don't know. You don't know the commitment you have with God. You see, you can be so committed and yet your heart is disconnected. Mm. That is what we call religion. You practice for practicing sake. You don't practice because you have to do it to succeed. Me, I don't go on my knees praying to God because I want to pray. I pray because I want to connect to him. There is a reason. If why should I sit down and pray because I just want to pray? I have something to do. Everything you do, ask yourself, why do you want to do it? What will you get out of it? Verse 10. Now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which bringeth not good fruit is what? Cast 
down and put in fire. There comes a time in everybody's life, and hear me, that God will have mercy on you by coming to cut things that are not bearing fruit out of your life. When I was praying, I said, God, what is this? And the Lord was telling me in the next three years, some major doors are opening for the church internationally all over. And I said, God, we are ready. He said, my Francis, there are some people who are around you that must be cut off. I said, why? Lord, have mercy. Cut a I said, no. As long as they are not being fruitful, their lifestyle will either delay or not take you in. So I must cut them off. So I said, God. And when I started seeing some of them, I love these people. But you see, somewhere you can love Saul. But God knows that Saul can be king. Sometimes love is not enough. Hiding power. Matthew chapter 7, please. Let's go. 16. You shall know them by their. You shall know them by their. You shall know them by their. Okay. Who should I use as an example? David, say I should use you. I'll use you. You will kill Goliath. If I feel that I mean, why are you going? Evangelism. Hey, why are you going? I'm going evangelism. I'm doing my center. And one year, nobody is following you. You are lying. Look, I know people who say they do all night. And if I look into their life, they are not, they are not doing all night. So, Pastor, every night I kneel down and I pray. Tell the truth to God. Every night you kneel down to sleep. You kneel down for people to think you are praying. But before God, we are sleeping. There is no way you pray all night and your life will not change in daylight. You see, I, I don't, I'm not in your room. I'm not in your house. But I will look at the fruit and I'll tell you that you are lying. When we were ready to build this place, everybody who knows me, knows, we didn't have money for it. We did not have money for it. Because it is not the money in the account or in the pocket that determines what you do. It is what is already accumulated in your spirit. When God looks at you, everybody look at me and tells you do this. Let me tell you, he has already deposited what it will take to do it inside you. And whenever you start talking trash, it's a sign to God that you don't even believe in him. God will never tell you to do something. And he has not already deposited how it will happen in you. And if you say God says, and after three years I watch your life and you do the same, he never said. Somebody spoke to you. When people see this building, what do they say? This is God. Is it true? This is. I was coming from Ablekuma. And I saw the body from this way. I said to myself, Charlie, I had you. <laughs> I clap for us. Yeah. And they said, these, these small people, how do they make how do they make them? How do they get the money from? Where do they make it from? Where do, they can do all those, but you see, it's a shocker. Because there are some people you go to the church, you can see millionaires, politicians, big people are there. Their burden is 25 years old, still at foundation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Am I condemning them? No. What I'm trying to tell you is that you know people by. Let's read the scripture. Go. Matthew chapter 7, 16, 17. Ye shall know them by their. Then let's read. Do men gather grapes or thorns or figs or thistles? If it is to every good tree, bring her forth what? Good fruit. But a corrupt tree, bring her forth what? Evil fruit. Look at someone say, What are you producing so far? I didn't hear you. What, what are you producing so far? What did the person say? I didn't hear you. Eh? Are you sure? Good. What, what is good about your fruit? Let me tell you this. One of the things I, I said on Friday, if I get myself connected with somebody, the first thing I expect is that a person's life might become better. 
or else I have failed. There must be a value added, not VHU. And when I see that I've added value to you, and I see that you want to leave, at this stage I'll tell you to go. But when I've not added any value, I'll fight for you to stay. After I add the value, you can go. Because it is when you go that you know that my value was real value. When I've not added any value, I know when you go, you will not miss me. You will never miss me. Can I add any value? Let's go on. Verse 20. Something has been repeated again. Therefore, by their fruits you shall know them. 20. Many will say to me, on that day, Lord, Lord, we have prophesied. We have done miracles in your name. And I will say, I did not know Say fruits. I didn't hear you. One day, someone say one day. This is Matthew chapter 21. Jesus was passing and I saw, I saw a nice tree from 19. Let's do 19. The tree was very green. Ha! And there was something we do like a fruit on it. Jesus went to Sitewa. Some people's lives look like they are bearing fruit. But when God gets close, he realizes that it is just fake. Fake fruit. Fake fruit. It's what? Uh, it's what? Fake. fake. You can borrow dresses and bring it to church. It's fake. For everybody to know that you are making it. You can even get up, put on tie. And when everybody asks you, I'm going to work, you know there's no work. Oh, it's just a matter of time. Everybody says you are going to work. It's just a matter. After three months, those who are having mercy on you will start giving you food. So, but these days, God, the people who used to like me don't like me. You say you have a job. At this stage, you must start feeding. Or oh, I just said it by faith. If you said it by faith, and it was real faith, you must see it good. So when Jesus saw the fix, he went close. He was hungry. He wanted to take something to eat. He went and it was 419. Have you seen Sam before? You've not seen Sam before? Oh, when you see a man, you think he's six back. You go to the house, the man removes the thing from the chest. Then the thing comes up. You think you've met a beautiful lady. You take her to the beach, say she won't go. Swimming pool, say she won't go. Hey. Then you marry her. She goes to the bathroom. Goes to bath. When she appears in the bathroom. Hey. Not knowing the back was borrowed. The front was borrowed. The face was borrowed. And the teeth was borrowed. That's when you meet a man. When he's going to sleep, they say, I go here. Huh? Oh. All of a sudden, this lady or this man runs away and says, I'm married again. That's what Jesus made. He thought he has met a fruit who was going to eat from it. And all of a sudden, Jesus, not me, cast it. Let me tell you, don't fake success. You'll fall under strange curses. Don't fake it. Don't fake it. You know, you know sometimes people even pledge. They make it look like they, will, they, will, they have it. Don't fake it. Sometimes people have things they want to give to you. Because of your fake attitude, they give to somebody else. Is it true? It's not true. Somebody went to buy a dress, wore the dress, bought shoe, realized that this one there is too big, and decided to come and give it to you. You two were known now. And I may say, when I went to Italy, I put some book around him up. 
Me, what I hate in my life is wearing second-hand clothing. Everything is brand new. You know, I have relatives who are in America and London, and they came bringing me things, and even this one I'm wearing, the truth is that you borrowed it, right? So whilst you are talking, the person is holding the bag full of good things for you. The person goes away with it, knowing that you don't wear second-hand. They said, Lord, I had a vision that God, my doors were open. Why has my doors been closed? Your door has not just been closed. You have been cursed. Nobody's going to help you because you faked it. But let me tell you this. If you live a true life, God will have mercy and God will show grace and you find help in time of need. I think I'm not preaching well. Look, if your if your bottle is flat, there is a man who likes flat. If your front is flat, there is a man who likes. Don't force yourself to marry the one because you have to fake the rest of your life. You go and do artificial. Why do you call friend artificial? Did that? Outside gentility, home cry. Oh, amen. I can't hear your amen. amen. I can't hear your amen. amen. You don't know how to cook. Tell the man, I'm sorry. I don't know how to cook. Maybe this man will still marry you and take you to his mother in mother or a relative. To, but you're too no. You go and do poison for this man to have fun. At this stage, I want to clap for myself. I'm preaching. I said I am preaching. Your friend is cooking for you to give to your boyfriend. Ah. Continue. The day the man sees it, the man will not just leave you. The man will curse you. Many people have fallen under strict curses because they make it look like, but they were not it. And deception is criminal. Oh, by law, deception is criminal. If your man who doesn't work and you tell a lady it is okay, if in the Bible says we should not do anything before we marry. If the woman marries you and he finds out later that you faked it, they can break it and the covenant can be broken because your marriage was on based on deception. Help me preach you. Oh, amen. amen. Your amen is no good at all. So let's read verse 19. And when he saw the fig tree in the way, he came to it and found nothing down. But what? Leaves only. Leaves. Look at someone. If you won't do it, don't promise. I didn't hear you. Say it well. Say if you marry me, don't propose. Hey. Hey. If you see a single person around you, tell the person, I'm talking to you. You can't do that, right? And let me tell you this. When Jesus saw the artificial, he cast it to the root. Let me tell you, ladies, can I give free counsel? If you meet a guy and he likes your weave-on, Brazilian hair, long nails. When he finishes proposing, remove all those things. For one month. If he still will marry you, go ahead and add that official. I think I'm preaching here. We 
share a son. I'm at it. Memory, I think, 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 and very soon he will send somebody to come and harvest. Now, I didn't hear you. Now, how does it look at Luke 13, verse 7? If you look at Luke 13, verse 7, compared to Matthew 21, 34, give Matthew 21, 34, and when the time of the fruit drew near, he sent his servants to the husbandman. Let me say, after staying in church for about three years, God will always send people to come and check if it is time for him to enjoy from you or not. Luke 13 verse 7. Now, if God sends somebody to come and check, since you became born again, how many souls have you won? Magazine. Oh, how many souls? Are you how? Shadrach. How many souls? Jets. Jets. Jet. Is Jet here? Jet. Jet is not here. How many souls have you? It's not me. Read. Look. Look. That said unto the dresser of his vineyard. Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. Cut it down. What comrade it in the ground? It's waiting space. After three years of being born again. God will come and say, hey, No problem. Let's look at the fruits. Don't sleep. Asimabao, how many fruits do you have? Hey. Are you how? How many? Hey, my brother, how many? Is it also? What? How many? Yeah. Jesus. Let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. It is my own observation. Any time you are in ministry, you are in church, and you do nothing, after three years, you want to leave. Because in life, everybody wants to feel important. That is life. And this, any relationship you get into, after three years, if you see that you are getting nothing out of it, you sit back and say, what am I even here for? You want to de- de- depart. Most marriages start suffering by the third year. When results are not forthcoming. Now, if God sends somebody right now to you this Sunday to come and Check if there's something on you for the kingdom. What will he get? I know what you will get. Gossip. Bad fruit. Complaining. Are you how? We are the Christians. We are the ones that go to church. Oh, I'm in church every day. What is your fruit? You are quiet. Tell them. Where is the fruit? Where are the fruits? Where are the souls? Who is in the church because of you? Whose life has been made better because of you? If you have been born again more than three years, let me see your hands up. I'm sure today this message is for you. If you're born again for more than three years. Now today, God is supposed to dress you. And he says that what is your fruit? What will you say? Someone should be able to tell God, if not for me, this supposed marriages would have collapsed. Lord, if not for me, 
this person's home will not have been. Lord, because of me, these people have gotten married. Lord, because of me, this people's life has become better. I gave this counsel to these people, and that's how their life has been. That is how you are kind for God, because I'll prove you that when you get to that stage, there's nothing you ask God he will not do. for me. Go! Yeah, the NLT, I like it. So, cut it down. It's just taking space in the garden. So, look at someone and say, which space are you occupying? Unfortunately, such people too, who don't bear fruit, they won't leave for some of you to come. There's a common statement with empty barrels. And it's true. He who is busy building doesn't have time for scrambles. Some of you, you are busy entertaining yourself in the kingdom. You entertain. When it's time for praises, the way you dance, you will dance and sweat like a pregnant fish. As soon as it is time for wisdom, God's word, it is time for sleeping. Hey! Look at somebody and say, What fruit are you bearing? I hear a hope. Mrs. Okra! What fruit are you bearing? Where are your fruits? Everybody send me your fruits on WhatsApp. It's accounting day. Send me your fruits. Amy, Amy, send me your fruit. It's three years. It's three years. I hear it. How? It's three years. Hey, John Davis, send me your fruit. It's three years. That's why you see that your mind starts roaming. Some of you, people have left rather than church because of you. You dated six girls. I didn't say two, six. And when they discovered each other, hey, read it again. He said to his gardener, I've waited three years. There hasn't been a single fig. Cut it down. Is just taking up space in the garden. Look at something in the kingdom. There is no space for idleness. You must bear fruit. Else you'll be cut down. These people are sick in your house and they carry them to hospital. You couldn't pray. In the night, people are crying. What is it? So this is my neighbor. They are disturbing. You got up in the morning. Somebody is dead. You couldn't get up. I said, let me try my God. Let my God pray. Pastor has been saying that if I'm born again, the Holy Ghost is inside me. Let me pray. Sometimes trouble comes in our neighborhood. Not because of the people. But because God knows that he has an angel in the neighborhood who he can use to change the world. Look at somebody say, the Bible says, by their fruits, we shall know them. Please, where are your fruits? When Jonah was in the boat, everybody call on your God. Opana was in the corner. Because he doesn't have God. He was running away from God. Hey. Those of you at the back. Vivi. Why are your fruits? Echo. Namesake. Who fruit way? Hey. 
I done teacher, teacher, teacher. Hey, please, professor. Ah, Jaggi, your fools. I hear about how three years. I was about I thought you will God will ask me if on judgment day. No, every three years you ask. What, does, what happens when you don't bear fruit? I'm going to go deeper. Should I go on? Matthew chapter 22 and 41 and 43. When you don't bear fruit, God sees you to be a wicked person. Who is a wicked person? Anybody who has been endowed with the Holy Spirit, the power of God, the gift of God, and does not use it to help his generation, it's wicked. Just like if you have money and your neighbor is dying and you can give the person some to be okay, you are wicked. He will destroy those wicked men miserably. Lease his vineyard to other vine dressers who will render to him the fruits in their season. So in every season, God even judges leaders. Every the church I gave you to handle, are you handling it well? If I can't show God fruit, God can say, I list it to you. So you see that I have a building. I have reverend. I have title. But I'm useless now in the kingdom of God. Why? Because I did not use what God gave me well. Politicians go for campaign every four years. You, every three years, you must give account. The gift of winning souls has now become the gift of chasing women. That body of yours that causes traffic by the roadside should have brought many to God has made many people have accidents. That your mouth that you should talk to me, have you heard, have you heard, have you heard, should have been telling people, have you heard about you? That God gave you to do the kingdom, you have been using to buy hair, buy nails, buy pawns. You have been equipping the kingdom of this world. Let me tell you this. Ever look at me? There are two kingdoms. We are talking about a kingdom citizen. In this world, there's the kingdom of God and the kingdom of darkness. It's either you are bearing fruit for the kingdom of God. Or you are bearing fruit for the kingdom of darkness. You come there and say, Me, they are day. Look at the land. You don't need to grow anything on the land, something will grow. Is it true or is it not true? If you watch them, if you are traveling, look at the bush. If you clear the bush, don't put anything on it. Come back in three years, you see plants have naturally grown on it. If you don't plant anything in your life, something will grow. So in life, you must deliberately plant success. Plant the seeds of breakthrough. Plant the seeds of wisdom. Plant certain seeds. Because not planting anything in your life will definitely also be tantamount to your own destruction. Verse 43, please. May this not be your portion. May 43 be not be your portion. So let's read. Therefore I say to you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruit thereof. So, whatever God gives you, are you, are you hungry or thirsty or angry with me? And I chew to do. Whatever God gives you, He will come for the fruits. And if you realize that you have not used it well, he will take it from you. You know why? He doesn't give you the gifts because you are good. He gives you the gift to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. 
until we all come to the unity of the faith. Give the Lord a mighty clap of faith. Romans 1.13 Paul wanted fruit among the Gentiles. So what did he say? Now I would not have you ignorant, brethren, that oftentimes I purpose to come unto you, but it was left hitherto that I might have some fruit among you also, even as among other Gentiles. Paul said he was in prison, but he was saying that I want to come there. Let me preach small, so that I'll add you to my CV. I want to add you to my CV. I want to say that since you joined the choir, I am the one that raised you to become a treble singer. I'm the one who raised you to be an auto singer. And the one who made you to become a star, even though I never held a microphone. I'm the one who made you. I want, Paul said, nobody can put me in chains. I want fruit in your ministry. Roman church. Being in prison, I'm writing. I'm going to write you a letter. Today we are reading the letter to Roman. I'm going to write to you. Nothing can stop me because I want to have fruits among you. There are some people, if you see that God has called them, if you invest in them, you join in their fruit taking. You didn't hear me on that. I said you didn't hear me on that. Have you seen somebody who has become very great? Like I had a story about Ronaldo. How many of you know Ronaldo, the footballer? He was playing football with somebody. And they were supposed to pick just one person. One person. And the person they picked must score more goals. And his friend, God, a boy, was supposed to score. If he scores, they'll pick him to go and play international. But he said to himself that Ronaldo is a better player than him. So he passed the ball to Ronaldo and Ronaldo scored. So they picked Ronaldo. Years later, Ronaldo called this guy. What does this guy want? A house? A car? Oh, Google it is there. Anything he wanted. The guy could have taken the ball and scored, but he doesn't like training like Ronaldo. Very soon, his career will be over, and Ronaldo would have been useless. Sometimes, hey, you are sleeping. Hallelujah. Come home. Come home. Come home. Come home. Sometimes, you don't have what it takes physically. And mentally, you have what it takes to encourage someone. Look at somebody say, Can I have some fruit in your account? What did he say? So, how did Paul do it also with the Philippians? One day, Philippians chapter 4, Paul was busy, he needed money for ministry. So Philippians 4, from verse 15, he said, Now ye Philippians know also in the beginning of the gospel, every beginning is difficult. Every beginning is what? Yeah, every beginning is difficult. Now people can look at me and say, Man of God, take this money. <laughs> Man of God, take this. Some people called me and they wanted to give me an award. I said, I don't like it. I said, award must be given to people who are struggling to be motivated to get there. You just want to capitalize on who I am to brand your product. You don't see people who have arrived and then you award them. See people who are struggling and invest in them. That's the sign that you believe in the after tomorrow. Oh, amen. amen. I had a pastor who said something very interesting. He saw some awkward people. I heard it also happened that some awkward man saw a church. They were disturbing him. So he went there and he bought the church building. And the following day, he locked the place and told the church people, it is mine. No more church service here. Go. That is how wicked the world is. But I know another pastor who also saw a church and there were awkward people who also wanted a place. He is not his church. That is Pauline Neche. Behind the scenes, he went to organize and bought the church from the awkward people who wanted to buy it. Then he called the church. He said, I bought it. I don't need it. 
God says it's for you, take it. You see somebody build a hundred thousand seat auditorium, world number one, and you are envious because you don't know what he has done for people who are struggling. It's easy for you to help people who are making it because you already know their food. But most often, at that level, their food is already shared. You are quiet. Though. Is it true or is it not true? You can meet a musician. Shashawale! Who is making it very big. And you can give him money. But that one who is there, on the street, if he gets that money, he can also bring him to the light. Nobody will see it. So Paul was talking. Let's read Philippians 4, 15. Can I have the NL? Okay, let's read it like this. Go. Go. Now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning what? Giving and receiving. But you only. 16. For even in Thessalonica, you sent once and again unto my necessity. Listen to the next one, 17. Not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. I desire fruit that will abide in your account. Let me tell you, everybody can have an account. But what is in your account? Some of you have safe in your house. You have wallet. All your wallet is complimentary card. I repeat, your wallet, your bag, complimentary card, and pieces of paper. Is it true or is it not true? You are wearing, holding bag, ladies bag, big one, they are working. I wish I could have a ladies' bag too. All of you, they've been big. Well, I want a big bag. That's a shame. Now, tonight, he's like, everybody read. Go. Not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may what? Abound into your what? Account. Paul was trying to say that you, if it, what you are giving me is because it's going to become a fruit that will be put into your account. But I have all. Come on, Jimmy. And abound. I am full. Having received from Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you, an auto of sweet smelling sacrifice acceptable. Well, pleased to God. 19. But my God. You see, because the account was put into his Paul's account, he didn't say God. Everybody has God. He said, My God. When God said, my gosh, which God are you talking about? Who have you, which investment, which kingdom have you invested in? You buy more beer. Let me not go there. The money you give to your will is more than your offering. This girl puts his hand into your hair. Take hundred. Pastor will talk. Twenty minutes offering. One city. Your account is with the girl. Go for it. Hey, Pastor David, today is you who is sleeping. Hey. Then let me end. If Pastor David is sleeping, then you are poor. I will repeat it. Too. You give things to the world. But when it comes to God, takes time. You just see a lady, nice body. So, Abba, okay. You see a church member as you are driving. You don't even give a lift. Because, oh no, okay, okay. Pastor, better. <laughs> hey. My last scripture, because Pastor David is sleeping, I'll continue on Wednesday. How do you bear fruit? How many of you want to bear fruit? Let's learn from Jesus. John 15. He 
Is somebody there? John 15. I am the true vine. And my father is a what? The husband's man. So give me NIV. Verse 1, please. I am the true vine. My father is the what? Gardener. So the garden belongs to who? God. And Jesus said he is the vine, the fruit. Let's go on. Verse 2. Every read, go. He cast off every branch that bears no fruit. No, no, but let me tell you. For we men of God, any time people are around us and they are not bearing fruit, God cast them off. Because they are a waste of oil and resources. You can be around. But oil doesn't flow to you. Because the anointing is not given for entertainment. It's given because of the father and his assignment. So sometimes you'll be there and say, as if my yet disconnected from church. You are here! But you are not here. I said, the flow is not there. Let's read. While every brine that's bare fruit, he prunes so that it will bring even more fruit. Some say pruning. I didn't say pruning. Say pruning. Do you hear me? Two kinds of people here. Number one. Those who don't bear fruit, God takes them away from church. These days, our church is full of useless people. We don't want that in bridge. At least 80 to 90% of church members in bridge are in department. And it is intentional. Which is different from most churches. Most churches can see the people there plenty. They are just there for coming sake. And that is not what God said we should do. May that never be our portion. May we not do church for just church sake. May we always have a church that is building people for the kingdom of God. Look at something. You are a soldier of God. Now, if God sees that you are not bearing fruit, he casts you off. So now, if God has not cut you off and you are here today, you are hearing me, let me tell you this. Then you must bear fruit. Say, I must bear fruit. But you know what is not making you bear fruit? He said, every branch that is bearing fruit, he prunes so that he will bear more fruit. Who can I use as an example of pruning? Any volunteer? Hey, nobody wants a volunteer. Uh, if I have volunteer, you come. If, if you are coming, come. I like, I like Fifi. Because what I'm saying is true. So you have volunteered it. Yeah. <laughs> so if I see Fifi, wonderful man, and I see that Fifi is going to do well, God wants him to bear more fruit. So know what God will do? You are single, right? Anytime God sees that a lady is coming to you, and that lady is the reason why you will not be coming to church, making time for God. God will cut the person off you. If God gives you business, and because the business you don't have time, that business will collapse. Because you see, He wants you to bear fruit. So anything that will not enable you to bear fruit, you see, you are different from the one who has been cut off because he's not bearing fruit. But you are producing a fruit of let's say ten percent. He wants ninety percent, hundred percent. So he looks at the things around you that is not enabling you to become successful. Demas has forsaken me because he loved this present world. So Demas loved the things of the world. So sometimes you have a friend. The person loves appeal. You will like the person. The, you have this friend. He always comes and says, happy the babe. Me, I like babies with shankos. And then God looks at you and all of a sudden God will let the person do something and break your heart. Then you and the person are no more together. Now when you meet the person, you say hello. He says hi. But you are not flowing. But you see, you are praying that God connect me to these people. And God is not going to listen to that prayer because he must prune you. Say so pruning. You know what is pruning? Pruning is taking the bad 
the dead. You see, life is like that. There are times that things that are not profitable are taking your time. So you can be there. The reason why you don't pray in the night is your phone. All of a sudden, your phone blah, will crash. Then you are using yam. When you got yam, now you can pray. And God said, okay, you have changed. Let me give you a phone. As long as gives you phone, after three months, you go back to watching things you don't want to watch. God says, no. Now money to even buy data you are not getting. You are saying, God, why are you doing this to me? I want you to watch t- things from church. When daddy sends, I want you to download. God says, you are lying. When daddy sends you things from church, you don't watch it. But when other people send you things, you watch it. So I can give you kingdom money so that you use the kingdom money to do what you want. Hey, I think I'm preaching. Now, anybody that doesn't want God to talk as a matter, God will catch you off. God only talks people their matter because they are doing well and he wants them to do better. And when God wants you to do better, he will talk your matter. You didn't hear me. I mean, I don't like that church. Oh. Because if you go there, the pastor will call you and tell you this thing you are doing is not good. This thing you are doing is not good. Let me tell you this. Look at Paul's letter. He wrote... Alexander the coppersmith, he mentioned their name. He has done me much harm. The mass has forsaken me because they went to town. And when they went to town, the mass saw some business be and saw that, that business is very good. He stopped coming to church, he was doing that business. Years ago, they said I should be a board member. I said, Me, board member. Any board in Ghana I want. I said, I don't want. But there are some things if you accept, it cripples you from doing God's work. There are some things. It is not every opening that is an opening. Some opening is just to take you off from God. So if you be very frank, since God blessed you, because of the blessing, that's why you are not seeing your life well. And God looks at you and says, it's just the crumbs I gave you and you have become arrogant. How can I give you the bigger bread? Since you got a car, you always come in the church late. When you even picking trotro, you were here early. Car. Now write down certain things that God must prune out of your life so they can bear fruit. Some of you, it is TV. It is TV. I say it's what? It's TV. Television. This soap opera you watch, I don't know what that one will do for you. You know very well what you must do. An angel calls you 3 a.m., get up and pray. When you got up, you go to WhatsApp, check it, Facebook, Instagram. Before you knew, it was 8 o'clock. Hey, God, it's time to go to work. Now, God doesn't wake you again because he knows that if he wakes you up, you will invest bad things into your kingdom. So, if you're waking up very soon, your job, they must sack you. Because if, look, you don't know God, eh? If he wants you to bear fruit, whatever he would take from you for you to bear fruit, he will do it. Say, <laughs> Lord, Please, you this one say it not from your heart. When the next one say, Lord, Lord. anything around me, anything around in me, that doesn't want me to bear fruit, cut it off. No, the first one you are lying, and let's do the real one. And please tell me the one who is not saying it. Say, Lord, Lord. Jesus, Jesus. I, am I am yours. Anything in me, anything. around me. That is not making me more fruitful. That is not making me more fruitful. Cut it off. Cut it off. So it's either you are cut off or the things that doesn't make you successful is cut off. Which one do you like? I think I'm not preaching well. If you have not done with you, you, you volunteered. Verse 3. 
You are already clean because of the word I've spoken to you. Hear me? Why did he say you're already clean? Because God doesn't cut you off by saying, I cut this thing off. Let me give you an example. Take yours. It's Fifi. That is when you are there. And God will tell you that, Fifi, now let your trousers go down. It is too tight. Your things are drawing. So God is speaking to you. And all of a sudden, Fifi starts wearing some trousers. And all of a sudden, he says, hey, it's like you've changed. Now what God is telling you is making you clean. Now you realize that they tell you that this short dress is too short, then you let it become long. What you are, people who don't take advice never get more fruits. The more you are counsel and advice, the more fruitful you become. Is, is it a good teaching? Are, are, are you with me? Let me tell you, let me tell you this. A lot of people who have learned how to do handiworks, like in San Rejuma, who don't have a lot of customers. The problem is that after you finish learning, you should have gone to stay under somebody who was good, who would tell you that this thing, you know how to show. But when it comes to finishing, finishing is spoken. Finishing is by rebuke. Somebody must rebuke you. You don't know how to iron. Iron it well. I didn't hear you. You iron for two years. You two iron for how many years? Three years. You don't start by sewing. You start by ironing. Those who sew will tell you. Anybody who, might, who knows how to sew well knows how to iron. Say, there me iron. <laughs> what is ironing? I came to sew. I didn't come to iron. And when you iron it by heart, they will tell you, take it back. You bend the cloth, you pay. Somebody's cloth. You pay, you pay. Many are not clean. They are carrying weight. Can I teach a bit, please? Are you angry with me? No. There is a difference between a sin and a weight. Hebrews chapter 12. And what happens is that a lot of us, we don't sin, but we carry weight. Your dress has made people look at you in a certain way. It's a weight. Some of the men who are worrying you, if we're decently dressed, they will not come into your life and waste your time. So the men are in a way, because you should have dressed for the one you have been assigned. You are dressing for the devil, so devils are surrounding you. I think I'm not preaching well. So you are not sinning, but you have a weight. Some of the movies we watch are weights. So there's a sin and there's a weight. Where did your missy come when you're waiting there? When God gives you something, he says, bring it to God and you, you chop it. And you feel heavy. It's a weight. You've not sinned. And weight, let me tell you what weight does to you. Weight reduces your speed. Every good farmer who has a cocoa farm goes to the farm and cut off all the brown leaves from the tree so that it doesn't compete with a major tree for the photosynthesis and the chlorophyll to become better and better. Verse 4, John 15. If you don't like my preaching, you can go home with your offering. Therefore, we... Oh, Remain in me. Someone said, remain in me. So bearing fruit comes by you remaining in Christ. And I in you. If anybody is in Christ, Christ in you. Remain in me and I in you. You know branch can bear fruit by itself. No matter the gifts you have, that gift can never multiply by itself except he is with you. You see, yeah, 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 grow. Years ago, I mentioned it. I was in Achimata Forest. There was a song that came for 24th. The song had to do with 24th. They came to chant on the album so that people would buy. When the album came, it's like hot pepper. Hot, 
hot and you kick. People just put it up on. Most of the songs we listen to, they carry spirits. Any song you play in your room brings an angel or a demon. I beg you. You say, this is Beyonce. You know where Beyonce is coming from. Now somebody is kissing you in a dream. A cockroach is kissing you in a dream. A lizard has entered your private part. And say, what is this? Most of these people we listen to, they have dedicated their soul to the devil. You, when you give birth, you bring it for us to dedicate it for you, right? When you are having your wedding, we pray over it for you. When you have in your house, we dedicate it for you. When you start a shop, we dedicate it for you. Those people too, when they do things, you know who dedicates it. Who, what do you dedicate it to? You come to church like this. You pray, God help me to get customers. And then when you go to the shop, then you are praying, Abinwaha. Contrary spirit. Now they don't know which God's people can enter. And Satan people can enter. So at the end of the day, nobody enters your shop. You have not sinned, but they say, wait. Your productivity has come low. Your heart is a Christian by your dressing. Is occult. So when you are walking, they don't even know who you are. God can know your heart, but you're dressing alone. It seems like you came out of the marine world. You were just from the marine world. You just graduated from the marine kingdom. I say God looks at the heart. Yes, God looks at the heart, but the marine people they don't look at the heart. Am I preaching to somebody here? He said, if you remain, if you abide in me, let's read, if you remain in me and I will remain in you, no branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain divine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. Look at someone say, I must remain in God. I didn't hear. Say, I must remain in God. Say, the master key is, I must remain in God. Say, I must remain in God. So, if to be there, you don't have money, but you must be in church. You don't feel like hearing preaching, but you must listen to preaching. You don't feel like praying. That's the time you call um, Minister Fori, Pastor Daniel. Is there any prayer meeting? No, not really. Pastor Daniel, I don't feel like praying. Where, where, is there any prayer meeting anywhere? Because you realize that your spirit is already backsliding. You feel like misbehaving. So, you want to force yourself to be in a particular presence. But let me tell you, a song sung by a pastor and a song sung by the worldly person, they are not the same. When a snake bites you and when a human bites you, everyone is tongue. But one of the tongue is poisonous. The snake's teeth is poisonous. The tongue is not everybody you must kiss. Some I love kids, you know. Anyone there? Some my lips are snake. I have seen a lady who was about to serve me with water. She just put her tongue in the water and brought it to me. And I said, what have you done to the water? The water was poisoned. The lady's pastor was useless. The man even is dead. His church was the biggest to have been in the eastern region. Like he had a church built, everything, but it was useless. I went there, I said, This is your secretary. The, the tongue is a snake's tongue. And guess what? I need the yeah. When they brought me the water, I said, Why did you bring me this water? He said, That's what we said for you. I said, Why is there poison in this? He said, That's what I said. Did you drink some of the water? I said, no. I just tasted the water. How do you taste a water in a glass by putting your tongue in? People who work around me, ask them. I call them one on one. I lay hands. Me. What time I from meeting them and lay hands? Because people around you are the people if the enemy wants to destroy, will use them to destroy you. 
So you be there and don't surround yourself with godly people. You must surround yourself with people that when arrows are thrown, they will take the goodness for you. Oh, I think I'm not preaching to somebody here. I said, am I preaching to somebody here at all? And this week, I declare, any agent around you will not survive. If you didn't say amen, I suspect you. We are demolishing agents this week in the name of Jesus. Say, so remain in me. And I in you. Else you cannot bear fruit. I talked to one of my daughters. And I asked her a simple question. I said, are you part, are you a, a shitting wood? Or some of you will not understand it. Shitting wood or cassia wood or plywood or wah wah. And I, she said, I'm not going anywhere if that's what you want to ask. I am an incorruptible person. And I was like, why do you say that? He said, years ago I talked and I said, if you are building, you put 10 blocks here. As you put 10 blocks, you are going for two more. You go for two. You never will build. And most of you don't know that in painful cases, some of you, you have scattered your identity everywhere. You are in this church, you are in this prayer group, you are in that thing, you are in that thing. You go here Monday, here Tuesday, here Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. You are serving God everywhere. Jesus said, Remain in me and I in you so that you can bear fruit. The next one, please. Before you start sleeping on me. You see, when I brought this one, your sleep has vanished. If I am the vine, you are the, the branches. If a man remains in me and I him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Underline that one. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Let me tell you this. A Christian who does not depend on God will one day be cut off. Let the talking cease. A Christian who does not depend on God He said, apart from me, it's not me yelling, God. You see that, say, my sister say, my mother say, my father say, my friend say, my neighbor say, my this one say, my this one say, my this one say, keep saying it. The next one, quickly. Read, go. If you, if anyone does not remain in me, he is like a branch that is thrown away. Widows, such branches are picked up and thrown into the fire and burned. This is Jesus talking. Of. Look at somebody sitting by you. Is one of the last time you read your Bible? I think you are doing me. You check your status. You don't read Bible. What is your spiritual nomenclature? What is the status of God this morning? What has God put on his status for you this morning? That one you don't know. But you can take your phone and scroll through 200 and something people. All of them, read all of them, their status. And when it's going fast, you hold it to stay so that you can read. And some will be as you Instagram, rolling, 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 looking, looking. So we may who had that. I bet five days ago, where did you Then you go to five days ago to see if it's comparing. But we give you a scripture, John 15. You don't know that what I'm saying in John 15, Matthew 3 8 also says that if you don't bear food, you will burn it away. You will never compare these two, but you are comparing Instagram and you. God punish the devil. Is your fruit. May God not throw you into the fire. The next one. That way, experiment power. Read, go. 
if you remain in me and my no and my miracles my miracles the breakthrough daddy you said six much I will break through but what did I say which scripture did I use you forgotten that one but you know the prophecy shame on you if you remain in me and my words remain in you ask whatever you wish hey. ask whatever ask whatever ask whatever and it will be what on which condition if you remain in me and my words remain in you never come to church and say we have kept long we can watch football first half second half extra time commentary and go to gold.com and look at the ratings of the players if you get the latest Cadillac, do you like it? Okay. If you get a wonderful man, will you marry? Good. All the things you are dreaming of, he says, I give you two conditions. Or three. Bear fruit. Remain in me. And let my word remain in you. Then ask what you wish for. But you know what? We always want the other one. God, I've prayed. I've prayed. i fasted. Wait a minute. The other condition, are you bearing fruit? Are you in him? Is his word in you? We don't have it. And yet we envy people. Cain envied Abel. Why did he envy Abel? It was after the sacrifice. Is the result. The sacrifice was independent of each other. But when he saw the way Abel was being treated, they said no. But we all had the same opportunity to do the same. What do you wish for? What do you want? Is it a house? Is it a car? A good home? That boy says, stay in my house. I'll marry you. You stayed five years. They divorced you. Five years. No marriage. Five years. The next one, eight. This is to my father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourself to be my disciple. Let me tell you, whenever you are not bearing fruit, you are not God's disciple. Give me the new King James for this, and I end here. I'll continue on Wednesday. Look at something. Whenever you are not bearing fruit, you are not God's what? And if you take your seat. Now, no, hold on. Were you at my training on Easter Monday? What are the stages to become a son of God? Number one. You see, it's not yet one week. Did you get some of this? Where is it? Okay. Who was not there? Who was not there? Okay. Who was not there? David were not there. What's the first stage? Who can give me? Those who were not there, who can give me the first stage? Sometimes somebody will not be at a meeting but knows what you don't know. And once the person knows what you don't know, he will get what you can have. <laughs> of course. The first stage is be a believer. Then you become a disciple. Then you move to what? A servant. Then you become a friend of God. Then you become what? A s- no. A son is the last. Okay, from a friend to a son. Um, so, so at this stage, until his words abide in you and you remain in him, he does even, you are just a believer. You are just a believer. And a believer is no trouble to anybody because James said that Satan also believes and trembles. You believe, Satan believes. So you are in Satan. You are at the same level. 
Satan, the only thing is that Satan can never be a disciple. Vivi. So just six days, you have forgotten the steps. But if I ask you, remind me of the steps of choosing a marriage partner. Genesis 2 18. You know what is there? Fifi. Then you are not ready for marriage. Oh. Fifi. You don't know what is in Genesis 2 18. If you marry and you don't know Genesis 2 18, and is this 22 or is it 27? Two things about marriage. If you don't know, don't get married. Number one. It's not good for a man to be alone. I make for health and marry me. And then for this reason, a man shall live and cleave. If you don't know these two things, forget marriage. If you don't know these two things, stop thinking, about, stop praying, it won't work. When certain things are embedded in your spirit, the fruit automatically comes to the fore. Take your seat. Oh, no. It's not in Marco. Give me the same Genesis 2. Why is there? The same Genesis 2 after 18. Is it 22 or 27? One of them. These two areas, they are the foundation for marriage. Purpose and living to cleave. Twenty-four. Okay. So you must know the eighteen and twenty-four. You must know this. What am I living to get this person? If you can't leave, you can't cleave. Cleaving is because you left something. Now look at somebody and say, "What are? You? Where are your fruits?" I didn't hear you. I didn't hear you. Some time ago, I took money. And went to spend holidays in Dubai. Do you know the fruit of my going to Dubai? This building. Ask everybody. But the is here. When I went to Dubai, whilst we were shopping, I was looking at buildings. <laughs> I was busy looking at how they build technology, how they can take small land and build high. Look at a building in Dubai. You can't see pillar. Hey! And they are going high. Beige Khalifa. My own friend is And they are going. I say, Kai. I look at. We we'll go to places in the night. And you can see them constructing things. I say, ah. I was just mesmerized with their construction. Everywhere you have been in life. What are the lessons that taught you? Those lessons are the fruits. If they are bad lessons, that is your fruit. If they are good lessons, that is your fruit. The last thing I will say before I end is still in John 15. He said, if the fruits remain, then you will ask whatever you ask in the name of Jesus to, to be handed. Say, my, give me that one. Say, my fruit must remain. I didn't hear saying my fruit must remain. If I forgot it, this one, God will not be happy with me. Where is that one? John 15. If, if I forget that one. Is it on the screen? 16. Good. I can't forget that one. Say my fruit must remain. I didn't hear you. So read it for me. Go. Mm -hmm. Fruit. And your fruit should that whatever you ask your father in my name, he would. You see, you've been asking the name of Jesus. So, Pastor Daniel, let me use you as an example. How many people have you brought to church? A lot. Where are they? So if you can't find them, 
to God, whatever you ask in the name of the Father will not be given to you. So sometimes we bring souls. The one that God keeps, the one talks about, is the one that remains. Everybody, look at the souls you have brought. Which of them are still in church? Forget, if you have not brought some, I beg you, you don't have fruit. But the ones that you brought, yes, I was talking to somebody in the evening about it. I used to, I have been bringing, where are they? Tell them, where are they? Where are they? somebody's name and ask the person, where are they for me? Where are they? One of the things I can tell you, me, anybody I've raised, leave, disappear, go 100 years, you come and look for me. Because that fruit will remain. I don't show bad fruit in anybody. You will come back and look back and say, this person's investment is what has made me who I am. Now look at somebody and say, where are your fruits? Okay, that one, two, three, four. Bring me your fruits in this church. I just use your four fruits as an example. Bring me your fruits. Bring me your fruits. Yes, bring me your fruits. So you brought Pamford. And Pamford left long ago and has come back. Yeah, bring your fruit. Yes, bring your fruit. <laughs> bring your fruit. Yeah. So she brought Barbara. So in terms of in the spiritual realm, these are your fruit. Yes, fruit. Fruit. Yes, brown. Brown. Ovori, where is your fruit? You have one fruit. Yes. Your sister. <laughs> Now, I want to do an example. Oh, move here. Move here. Move here. I want you to ask God what you want in his name, looking at your fruit. You to do so. You to do so. I'm doing an experiment. Brown. Who wants to join them because your fruit is here? If your fruit is here, you want to do I'm doing an experiment. This is my demonstration for today. If I pray, if I if I've asked for healing, I'll ask all those who are sick to come. Let me pray, right? Josephine, where are your fruits? Let them come. Yes. If you have fruits, let them join you. Call them. Call them. Oh, Josephine, call your fruits. Those you know. Over, you say your sister. Your sister is not coming. Yes. Where are your fruits? I hear her hope. Buy that somewhere. Your fruit. Excel. Your fruit. And the fruit must remain. I hear how. It's, it's so easy for you to get them. But to maintain them. That's what the Bible says. Say, he that brings a person to church is wise. He that winneth a soul is wise. It's the winning that makes you wise. Eh? Bring them. Okay, wait. Don't come. Wait. Stand here. Stand here. If these people who have called brought you to church, come and stand by them. Don't call anybody. They know themselves. They should know. Every child knows their parent. If they can't come, it means it's not you. If I'm going in the night with a race in my car and police say, hey, who is this? I just work in a race and say, daddy, who is that? Your fruits. Brown. Brown. Charles Davis. Your fruits. Charles Davis. Charles Davis. They are not in church today. Today is accounting day. Where are your books? Michael, who brought you to church? Pastor Daniel or Barbara? Barbara. So go, join them. 
teaching you how fruits work. And sometimes, God forbid, God knows that if anything happens to you, these people who are following you, their faith in God will collapse. So, in it, sometimes you are misbehaving. God says, I'm covering you. Because it is not just about you, the people who are following you. If anything happens to you, their faith will go down. Yes. Yes. Who else? Charles Davis. How many years have you been in bridge? 15, 14. Jesus. Jesus. Three divided by 14. Four and a half. Jesus Christ. Hmm. Charles Davis, you are in trouble. If I'm you, I start crying to God to have mercy on me. Yes, who else? Why are your fruits? Yes. And Jackie. Alpha and Omega, we worship. Page, the way you've been talking, I want to do God's work. I want to do God's work. You are your third year. You are your third year or second year. Third year. Today is account day. Apart from your girlfriend, who have you brought to church? You are your third year. Yes, bring them. Bring them. Bring them. Alpha and Omega. And you who brought them, start telling God that God, you say that I will ask anything in your name. And you will grant it. And please, when you are asking, ask well so that you can give them all something also to enjoy so that they will know that God answered. Brown! Hey, I hear how. Child Davis, 14, 15, five years. Page, the way you talk, Omi Naire, Omu Kosku, Omu Kuspintes. No, no, it's accounting day. No, it's accounting day. It's accounting day. If today God wants to look at these people and do something for you, what would you do? Asa, why are your souls? You are not here. accounting day. Tell them your soul is here. Yeah. I hear a how. So the rest of you who brought you. <laughs> Esther. Who will follow you? It's hard. Father Soma. You were a pastor in Bridge. Who did you bring? Who have you brought? I'm listening to you. Who? He's coming. Uh, I never know. So you brought him. Okay. One. Yes. Pastor Tony. Pastor Bomas. Pastor David. Show me who you brought. Accounting day. Yeah, I hear what how. Yeah. Yeah. Hey! Pastor David, I'm waiting for you. I'm waiting for you. They are not around. Jesus, you have failed me today. No. No. No, no, no. You can't sit yet. You can't sit yet. Brown, you are following who? Are you the? Is it the who brought you? How? You came to ask for favor. <laughs> Why did he meet you? When I came, like, you came to the church by yourself. Then he's the one who sustained you. I'm talking to the one he has brought to church. <laughs> Pastor Bumas, you say Michael? No, they should see you and come. Michael, did he bring you? I didn't hear you. They are not in church today. Hey, how can 
they not be in the father's house? Mr. Ansa, Mr. Ansa, Pastor Tony has gone into his heart. He said he brought you. Where's Mr. Ansa? Hey, Mr. Ansa. Sam! Sam! They came in the morning. <laughs> First service. Hey. Now, please, you standing here, hold hands as a group. And as a group, also pray. Something which has been impossible in your life. Talk to God. Ask him about. Oh, no, don't hold somebody's group. Oh, be an grace. Pastor Tony, we are waiting for Mr. Anderson. Pastor Tony brought you to church. Hey, Pastor Tony, did If you have been bringing people to church, and I didn't mention your name, can you and your people meet together right now and pray? Maybe you have been bringing people to church. I don't know. You have a man Vera, yeah. You have people. The people you brought to church. Let people who my Vera brought to church go to her. Hey, you also do the same. Do the same. You have people you brought to church. So you brought him. Good. Do the same. We are asking, put the scripture on the screen. If your fruit remains, whatsoever you ask my father, he will do it. Put that scripture on verse 16 on the screen. Yeah, Mrs. Swahili, join your group. Yeah. I was telling somebody that, Sarah, it wasn't... I said Mrs. Swahili brought you. I said it somewhere. I, I said it wasn't useful. Yeah. We are using the scriptures to work home. I hear how... But Pastor Tony, you brought your wife. Oh. <laughs> As for Pastor Bomas, you married your wife here. So, and your children. No, your children are your fruits. That one, I give them to you. <laughs> all fans are here. All fans. Oh, all fans. All fans by now you should have you. So who brought you? Isaac, he's gone. Oh, love brought you and love is gone. Pray. You are pray. Tap into it. We are doing something very practical. And I'm going to see God answer this prayer. You think that the person who came for you came for you. Jesus said, I, you did not choose me. I chose you. Hey, Pastor David has gotten somebody. You did not choose me, but I chose you. But center people, if you brought people here and they are your people, hold your hands and pray. When the person came to and said, I follow me to church, you think that, oh, is the person who did say, no, he said, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go. So when you went to win the soul, when you went to win the soul, it was him. Michael! Prophet, where are your grandchildren and where are your children? Prophet of God, they are what? 
single. Teen department. And you like bringing teens. Pray to God. Someone's by someone. By someone. I hear you are stolen a soul. By someone. Don't let God catch you, anybody off here. Hey, who brought you to church? Is it pastors? Pastor Soma? <laughs> the two of them came to your house. I hear you how. I hear you. Tell God, fruits that remain. As for anybody getting a show, they see you. Follow me to church. The person comes, doesn't come again. Follow me to church. The person doesn't come, doesn't come again. Why? God wants kingdom citizens. Because there's a lot of things Adam alone cannot do. So God said, be fruitful and multiply. A lot of the things Adam alone cannot do. All these ladies, somebody must marry them. All these handsome men, somebody must marry them. A lot of God businesses, some, that's why you must bring people to church. The kingdom is so big, Adam. Adam, you must reproduce. You must bear fruit. Abraham, Eliezer, your servant cannot control the house. Ishmael cannot control the house. The son of from your loins, the one you birthed in the body of Christ. Ishmael didn't stay. Isaac maintained. Where is Pastor Victor? Pastor Victor, you can't hide. Where are your fruits? Where are your fruits? You can't have fruits and not let them be in a service. You can't have fruits and not follow them up. A man had a hundred sheep. One got missing. He went around looking for him. He went around looking for him. He went around looking for him. You can't tell me your sheep didn't come to church. If we're sharing one million, the day I decided to give things to sons and daughters, some people were not there. They said, I'm still your child. I need one. Pastor Victor, why are your children? Hurry up, because the prayer line is about to be closed. You have soul. And go for the soul. Go. Go. For you to let somebody remain in church for three years, following up, maintaining the person for three years, look, it's something. Keep, 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 keep praying. Shapi, who brought you to church? Who have you brought to church? You brought Fatia to church. Sing for me. I, the Lord of snow and rain. Keep praying. Give a key for me. Keep mommy for me.
fast and pray. God just does things. But if God doesn't do it, he's embarrassed. Church, pray. Maybe you are a single tree now. You came by yourself. But now you are praying the Lord from today. I'm going to start raising an army. I'm still going to raise an army. I'm going to bring somebody. And I'm going to make sure the person remains in you. Yes, it is good for us to help our cousins, our sisters, and our brothers. But it's one thing to have our own children in the Lord that we are raising. Raise an army. Raise the army. Talk to God, please. Tell God, don't cut me off. Don't cut me off. I want to bear fruit. Rather, cut off things around me. That is not helping me to become fruitful. Cut off things. It can be pride. It can be laziness. It can be fear. Inferiority complex. I meet people. I talk to people. I have a lot of people on my phone who are my friends. Lord, give me strength to talk to them. Mm-hmm. 
The kingdom of God is not in word, though. It's in fruit bearing. I'll continue on this tangent on Wednesday. I didn't, you didn't choose me. I chose you to go and bear fruit. And that your fruit will remain. So that whatever you ask the Father in my name. What a statement. You think you are choosing to talk to somebody? You are thinking you are the one who is choosing to talk to somebody. It is he who is compelling you to. Pray to God. If you are already bearing fruit, pray to God, God, I want to bear much fruit. This fruit is too small. This fruit is too small. This fruit is too small. Lord, I want to bear much fruit. I want to bear greater fruit. I want to have more fruits. By their fruits, you will know them. It takes a great person to raise a great person. Now, everybody, please be on your feet. Lift up your hands wherever you are. Leave hands and lift up your hands. Say, Lord Jesus, I want to bear fruit. I can't be serving you and not be fruitful. I am sorry that I did not bear fruit. I want the fruit to remain. Today, I got to know that my fruit must remain so that whatever I ask in your name Jesus I would have it do not cut me off help me Holy Spirit to bear fruit let the fruit of righteousness the fruit of mercy the fruit of worship the fruit of soul winning every fruit the fruit of the spirit let it be birthed in me so that my life will be a testimony now Lord Jesus look at my life make me a testimony that people will ask me something about Jesus and when they ask I promise to talk to them about your mercy and your grace I thank you Jesus for this opportunity in Jesus' name. Amen. Come and give the Lord a mighty hand and take your seat. As some of you, you have answers from tonight. From tonight. From tonight. I, I can give you a lot of examples of people who provoked their fruits and God said, I decided against you, but I changed my mind. Amen. Give the Lord a hand of praise here again. Can we lift up our hands? Look at somebody and say, You. You forgot Wednesday. Wednesday, we have a service here. Come and bear fruit. Tell somebody, I want to sit by you on Wednesday. What is your name? The Lord guide you, protect you. Let God make you a shining light to this generation. Be a city set on a hill that people will come and watch. Let your star outshine any other star in Jesus' mighty name. God bless you. Thank you for coming. See you here on Wednesday. God bless you. <laughs>